Hi, welcome to Skip's Corner, where I cover Nashville's baseball history and events and introduce you to players, coaches, and other fans. I want to tell you about someone that I respect greatly, and, and many do, and many miss him as I do. His name is Fred Russell, a newspaper man. He was one of the most well-known and well-respected sports writers in his day. And in these days of newspaper turmoil, there are few who can match his popularity or his ability to involve his readers. It is estimated that he wrote over 12,000 columns printed in his Sideline Sidelights column in the National Banner. Now, to me, he was the Vin Scully of print. He's a member of the National Sportscasters and Sports Writers Association Hall of Fame and the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And he knew all sports, especially football, and served as chairman of the group responsible for selecting college football Hall of Fame members and was a member of the Heisman Trophy Committee and president of the Football Writers Association of America. But I talk about baseball, and I believe Fred Russell also knew baseball. And few know he played baseball at Vanderbilt, where he played second base and pitched and he interviewed a myriad of sports figures, including the greats like Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Ty Cobb. He counted his friends Sparky Anderson and George Steinbrenner and many other notables in his 66-year career with the Nashville Banner. He spent a month each year at spring training, usually covering the Yankees, and once said Casey Stingle was better than any show anywhere. Now, sometime in the last 20 years of collecting articles and reading and writing about Nashville baseball, I cut out an article that he wrote entitled, A Nod to Sulphurdale Alumni Who Thrived in the Major Leagues. It was published in the Thursday, August the 16th, 1990 edition of The Banner. Russell had received a request from a reader to publish a team of Nashville Vols players, that would have been between 1901 and 1963, who, after leaving Sulphurdale, fared best in the big leagues. Now, Russell wrote that he did not watch the Nashville Ball Club on a regular basis until 1920, and he referred to individual records before that time in making his choices. And he started out with a pitching staff of 10 members, and it included these Nashville players. Some of these you'll recognize, and some of these you won't. And remember when I talk about these pitchers and catchers and infielders and outfielders, that they may not have had a great year with the Vols, but they had a great career in the major leagues. The first one he chose was Hall of Famer Wade Hoyt. Hoyt was only 5-10 and 10 in 20 games as an 18-year-old pitcher for the Vols in 1918. But between 1918 to 1938, he won 237 games in the majors. And then there was Red Lucas, who was born in Columbia, Tennessee, and lived in Nashville after his baseball career and passed away in Nashville. He was 20 and 18 in 1922 for the Vols, returning after his major league career in 1944 and 1945 as a reliever, pinch hitter, and coach for Larry Gilbert. In the majors, he won 191 while losing 181 games between 1923 to 1938. George Pipgrass, he played one season for Nashville in 1935 and was four and six in 25 games, but in his years in the majors between 1923 and 1935, he was 102 and 73. And here's a name you'll probably recognize for an unusual reason. His name was Rip Sewell. He was known for inventing the Ephus pitch, and that was a high lob to the plate. And he threw it to Ted Williams in the 1946 All-Star game, and Williams hit it for a home run. He was in Nashville in six games in 1931. But in the majors between 1933 to 1949, he was 143 and 97. Another name that you're bound to recognize is John Vandermeer. Vandermeer was a Vol in 1936 while on a rehab assignment with a bad arm, and he pitched in only 10 games. He only lost one, and, but he didn't lose any. However, in the major leagues between 1937 and 1951, he won 119 games, although he lost 121. But he was the only player in Major League history to toss two consecutive no-hitters. That was while pitching for the Cincinnati Reds in 1938. Johnny Sane, another one that you probably remember for being one half of the epigram, Spawn and Sane, then pray for rain, talking about Warren Spawn. 
And he was in Nashville for two seasons with manager Larry Gilbert's Vols in 1940 and 1941. And he won 10 while losing 16 in 71 games. But in the majors between 1942 and 1955, he won 139 and lost 116. A name you may not be familiar with is Bob Rush. When Nashville was a farm club for the Cubs, Rush pitched in 23 games and had a 9-7 and record. That was in 1947. And later, between the Cubs and Milwaukee Braves, Rush won 127, although he lost a few more, 152. Claude Osteen, now we're getting into the 50s and 60s, and people will remember these names. Claude Osteen, in his first professional season at the age of 17, he was 1-1 one one in two games with Nashville. But in an 18-year career from 1957 to 1975, he won 196 games and was chosen on three all-star teams. Jim O'Toole. O'Toole's first pro season was in 1958 in Nashville, and he was 20-8, and eight, had a great season. And he also pitched for 10 seasons in the majors for the Reds and the White Sox between 1958 and 1967. Jim Maloney, everybody still talks about Jim Maloney. He was with Nashville in 1960. He won 98 games in 11 major league seasons with the Reds and California Angels. But that one great season in Nashville, in 1960, he was 14-5, and five, and he earned a call-up to Cincinnati midseason. Now, Russell's catchers include these guys. Rube Walker played in Nashville in 1947, and he caught for three big league clubs, the Cubs, the Brooklyn and L.A. Dodgers, and Smokey Burgess, catcher for the Vols in 1948, had a, an amazing 19 seasons in the majors with the Cubs, Phillies, Reds, Pirates, and White Sox. Johnny Edwards is a name that people recognize and remember because he was Jim Maloney's catcher in 1960 at Nashville and later had 14 seasons for the Reds, Cardinals, and Houston between 1961 to 1974. Russell's infielders include old-timey guys. You're not going to recognize these names, I don't think, but let me tell you about them. He picked four and a utility player. Jake Daubert, a first baseman for Nashville in 1908, during their third Southern Association Championship, deserves Hall of Fame consideration for his 14 years in the majors with Brooklyn and Cincinnati because he had a 303 lifetime batting average in the majors and twice led the National League. Eddie Abaticchio was a Nashville second baseman way back in 1902 before heading to the majors where he played for the Phillies, Braves, and Pittsburgh and had a 254 lifetime batting average. Lonnie Fry was ball shortstop in 1933. He played for Brooklyn and Cincinnati between the 1934 and 1948 seasons and hit for a 269 average. Jimmy Outlaw was third baseman. He held down that hot corner for Nashville in 1936 before playing for the Cubs, Braves, and Detroit between 1937 and 1949. Billy Gardner was a utility player for Nashville in 1953 and had a big league career for 10 seasons, beginning in 1954 with the Giants, Orioles, Senators, and Red Sox. And Russell rounded out his team with some outstanding outfielders. Hazen Kai Kai Kyler was Nashville center fielder in 1923 before playing for the Pirates, the Cubs, the Reds, and the Brooklyn Dodgers, and he had an amazing 321 lifetime average. Now, he was chosen to the Hall of Fame in 1968 by the Veterans Committee, but that one season in 1923, he hit 340 as a member of the Vols, and I'll have more to say about him in a second. Lance Richburg, now Russell spells his name with an H on the end, but it's in most cases, you see it is spelled R-I-C-H-B-O-U-R-G, was not only an outfielder for the Vols in 1923, along with Keeler, but he managed the club in 1936 and 1937. His big league career included stints with Washington, the Braves, and Cubs between 1924 and 1932, and he had a 308 lifetime batting average. Hank Lieber, you may not recognize his name, but he was an outfielder in Nashville in 1934. And when he moved to the majors, he played for the Giants and Cubs and had a 258 batting average. Phil Weintraub played for Nashville in 1934, too, and went on to a nine-year career playing with the New York Giants, the Reds, and the Phillies, and batted 295. 
Now, Russell didn't stop there. He chose manager Charlie Dressen, who led the club in 1932, 33, and 34, before returning in 1938 after four seasons as manager of the Reds as his manager of this glitter club. Now, Russell closed his article with high praise for one former National Vols player over all the others. He wrote, in my opinion, the greatest all-round performer, both as a Vol and in the big leagues, was center fielder Kai Kai Kyler. Few in the game could match his combined hitting, throwing, and base stealing ability. Born on August the 27th, 1906, in Wartrace, Tennessee, he died on January the 26th, 2003, at his residence in Nashville at the age of 96. What a great sports writer Fred Russell was. He loved to play jokes on people, never to harm anyone, but he had that kind of a personality. He had that kind of a wit. The players loved him. The managers loved him. Other sports writers idolized him. And I'm not sure that we have too many around anymore that write or that research or that love sports as much as the great Freddie Russell. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you'll come again another time to Skip's Corner. If you'd like to write to me, give me some advice. Tell me, uh, give me a suggestion. Give me a complaint. I can handle that. You can write to me at 262downright at gmail.com. And as always, I'm grateful that you would join me. Thank you.